Hello, I'm Lorna Cole. I'm a senior ecologist with SAC and we are here at Balsa Glen where Heather and Philip Coase are working with the Scottish Wildlife Trust to try and improve the floral content of their grassland fields. Species-rich grasslands support unique communities of native plants and these communities are maintained by low-intensity agriculture such as extensive grazing or mowing regimes. The plant communities are driven by soil pH. So for example, your acid grasslands will be characterised by tormentil, harebell, heath bed straw, whereas your neutral grasslands, they'll contain bird's foot trefoil, knapweed and butterfly orchids. And finally, your calcareous grasslands Commonly we find um, wild thyme and fairy flax. The unique communities of plants in turn support unique communities of invertebrates. And many of these invertebrates are rare and declining. Unfortunately, we've lost approximately 97% of our species rich grassland. And we really need to look after this vulnerable habitat. To reverse insect declines, we need to bring the flowers back into our towns and countryside. And this is exactly what the Scottish Wildlife Trust are doing in their nectar network. Um, I'm Heather Close. I farm with my dad in Turnbury uh, in South Ayrshire. We market as Balsar Glen, so the farm is known as Littleton Farm. We're a beef farm. Our fields are so flowery and diverse, um, I think for a number of reasons. Firstly, we outwinter our cows. And I think that the, the, the hooves massage the ground over winter, especially when it's a little bit wet. And that allows the forbs in the spring to slightly outcompete the grasses, which gives them a bit more of a head start. Secondly, we have uh, longer rest periods. So Dad's been leaving 30 days for a large number of years. The last couple of, th well, the last three years, we've extended that to nearer three months. And we've noticed that a lot more species have come through, things like birds for trefoil and the vetches, which I think need a longer rest period. So as you can see from the cows behind us, um, we do something called mob raising, or it's also known as adaptive multi-paddock grazing. So this means we basically adjust the grazing throughout the year, depending on the seasons, the cow performance, and our needs, to be honest, as well. So sometimes we move them three times a day, sometimes it's once every three days. And I think this also, this variety allows for different species um, to make their way through the soil as well. So the, the flowers are, not, are there not just to look pretty, but they also help with production. They're, they're all serving a purpose. Each plant has a different function. It has a different root depth that brings up different nutrients. And um, we've noticed since Dad stopped using fertilizer in 2018, that we, um, the diversity has just has increased. It seemed that when, um, the plants had access to fertiliser, they didn't need other forbs around them to help fix the nitrogen. Um, it was a shortcut basically, but now all the plants are there um, feeding the soil, working together, and we've actually noticed that our production is increasing. The number of cow days per hectare is in has increased over the last few years working this way. The Scottish Wildlife Trust and their seed mixture will, will be brilliant because we have certain fields that have been let out for a number of years and we've only recently taken them back in and some of these had a lot of nitrogen applied so there's a lot of grass there but there's not much else so having access to this seed will be brilliant we can bring some diversity into those fields as well make them more like the rest of the farm. Um, another thing uh, we're trialling is we're going to bring some haylage from a more diverse fields onto this field and we've had we've heard from other farming friends who've had really good success with this so the sward from the field it's taken off is a, is a lot more more diverse and the idea is that we'll unroll the bale and the cows will eat and then trample a lot of that into the ground so we're hoping to see some more forbs come up from that okay. so i'm lynn bates uh, i'm the scottish wildlife trust nectar network coordinator based here in ayrshire Obviously, we find that a lot of the permanent um, grasslands are quite species poor, and that can be for a number of reasons. You know, things like uh, draining, um, overgrazing, overfertilizing. Um, so, yeah, lots of reasons why the 
plant indicators uh, become outcompeted. So there's lots of uh, really easy, simple measures that farmers can do. Um, one of them really is to just to tweak the grazing management. Um, so having longer rest periods in between grazing, so that will allow the flowers to grow and set seed, and there you and able to spread the seed. So you're giving that that, that longer period. Another way is to reduce the uh, inputs through uh, with fertilizers. So you're saving, you're reducing your costs, and you're reducing uh, increasing that fertility of the soil. Um, so that, again, the flowers will have. Um, uh, will benefit uh, from that. We've been trialling uh, different methods um, over the last two or three years. One is using green hay, so allowing um, obviously the, the grasses to grow, the flowers to grow and choosing an area that's fairly species rich, uh, cutting it, obviously once it's set seed, cutting that and then and moving it, padding it into the back of a muck spreader and then spreading it over a field that's ready to, to receive that. And that's free, that's free seed. We've also been trialling things with yellow rattle. So yellow rattle is great, it's a semi parasite on grass. Farmers get a little bit nervous sometimes about it, they think they're going to reduce all of the grass, but if you don't want the yellow rattle you just you, 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 um, you cut it or remove it before it sets seed, it's an annual. So there's lots of different trials that um, more adventurous farmers can do uh, if they want to make it more species rich. It is really important to prepare the ground. If, if you're thinking of either sowing seed direct or using the green hay or the haylage, is to really open up that sward. So you can do that by poaching, you can do it by um, grazing hard and or scarifying, r running it over to really get that, um, that sward open. So allowing the, the bare, some bare soil there so the seed can make that seed to soil contact um, so you start to get that species richness.